This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models and Memories Weekly, episode 156. Models and Memories is a show about nothing and is filmed in front of a live studio audience. This is a show where I talk about painting, modeling, and working experiences from the week. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three videos a week. Ow! Could I possibly have more to say? Well, I do, and here goes. This week, Games Workshop is gearing up for Adepticon. I found a really cool miniature in a really weird place, and I got some painting done. But first, you know it has four sides and looks great on the internet? That's right, today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace allows anyone to break into website design with easy to use features and professional support from start to finish. Looking through the dozens of award-winning templates on offer, you can customize the look and design of your website with ease. And with Squarespace's patented Fluid Engine system, it's a breeze to design a website you can truly call your own. Squarespace's system allows you to stretch your creativity through tools like the drag and drop features so you can really freestyle your way to the website of your dreams. Or your own online storefront. Whether your services are physical, digital, or service-based, selling your wares has never been easier with Squarespace. Squarespace offers a free trial for you to dip your feet into and test the waters, and when you're ready to dive in headfirst, you can go to squarespace.com slash eonsbattle or follow the link in the description below to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. But before we get to all the Games Workshop drama, I want to talk about the new things coming to the Mantic Halo game, because recently they teased that they're doing a game, and now they've teased some actual miniatures, some Spartans. Mantic has shown off four Spartans coming to their miniatures game, and they look fine. They look very good. They're based on the new Halo games, which is fine, but I don't know. I was really hoping for Halo 2, especially because Halo 2, like, the new Halo games look a lot better. They're way, way more modern. But I actually feel like all of the sculpts from Halo 2 and even Halo 1 would look really good in miniature form. Because when you scale an actual thing down, I feel like you almost wouldn't have to scale down the old Halo designs. Because they were kind of simple in the first place. It was kind of the, the textures and the prints that were actually on the characters that made them look at all complicated. If you just took like the base model and scaled it down, I feel like it would work really, really well in miniature form. Also just the classic Master Chief, like that is what a Spartan looks like to me. All of the new cool interesting helmets are, are cool and interesting, but for some reason, I, the head kind of makes it. If they don't have the classic Spartan head, they don't really look like Halo to me. So these four guys, they're very, very cool but they don't feel like Halo. Like I'm, I'm thinking like classic rooster teeth, red versus blue. That's kind of what I wanted. I also, how fun would it be to recreate red versus blue in a tabletop format, like build blood gulch? Like, ah, oh, that would have been really, really cool. And that might be what we're getting. I'm sure they'll do a classic Master Chief. But yeah, the, currently the four Spartans are four Spartans. The blue one, the blue one looks pretty darn close, but the other ones kind of look like any other sci-fi universe. I think it all started with Iron Man. This like sleek kind of, this like Iron Man do, didn't really look like any robots before Iron Man, but after Iron Man, everything looks like Iron Man. And these guys kind of look like Iron Man's. Like, remember in Iron Man 3 when all of the suits come to help protect uh, Tony and Pepper, and you see all the different designs, and that one that looks exactly like the 40k Terminator model? That's kind of what these guys remind me of a little bit more than Halo. Maybe if they were painted in the classic, classic colors, they would, they would jump out a little bit more as Halo. But I don't know, I'm just really, really waiting for the Covenant because I want all of the little Covenant monstrosities. I love the Covenant so much, they're super cool. I still have never played, I own every single one of the games, but I've never played Halo, but I've read the novels for some reason. When I was a little kid, I read all the novels, probably because I didn't actually have a game system. I didn't have a, a, uh, an X-Book or a, or a Playmobil. So I, I couldn't actually play the video games, but I read all the books. So I really do like Halo a lot. But yeah, I don't know. This, this current showing of the miniatures, it shows that they look very good and they seem to be very well sculpted, but they're not quite doing it for me yet. But I still, I still have hope for the Mantic Halo game. But speaking of having a lot of hope, Games Workshop showed off an article where they took one of my ideas, which was to take one of their ideas. The new, the Tau Crisis suits are being broken up from one data sheet into three different data sheets, which is perfect because the different loadouts that you, that unit has like, you can take 
almost any weapon in the Tau Codex, but they're very, very different. Like, Crisis Suits with the Missile Launchers is a completely different unit to Crisis Suits with the Flamethrowers. And so it's good the Games Workshop has acknowledged that and split them off into their different data sheets. I think that's a really, really good idea. I wish that they did that all over the place because it's free war gear works most of the time because most units don't really have that much war gear. Like literally the Necron Codex, almost no units have any war gear at all. So it's not that big a deal. But some of the older things for 40K, like Chaos Space Marines, Imperial Guard, and Classic Space Marines have nothing but war gear. And so sometimes units like completely change based on what free war gear they get to have because you always put all of it on. I would love to see the return of like Imperial Guard conscripts because fighting Imperial Guard is so frustrating because every little 10 man squad Acadians has five special weapons that all have to be rolled individually or you really have to come up with like, well, the blue one is the plasma pistol and the black dice is the plasma gun and then the black dice is the sniper rifle and then the green dice is the melted gun and just rolling it, it's a kind of a mess. And it makes them really, really incredibly efficient. If there was a more, like, if there was a fully kitted out Imperial Guard Cadian unit, and then there was just a normal Cadian unit with nothing but las guns, which is kind of what, which is almost what you want. Like, of course, if you can have all the special weapons for free, you want to take all the special weapons. But I definitely wouldn't mind paying less points for just a complete nothing squad of just classic, classic Cadians. It's just, it's a little bit annoying sometimes with the free war gear for a few loadouts. And I think it's a really, really good sign that the crisis suits have been broken up into more reasonable, like a more reasonable roster. Cause sometimes you probably do want to take all flamers and just have a, just a flame storm kind of day. But really, realistically, it's probably the plasma guns or the melted guns that are like the ones to take. And the annoying thing with free war gear sometimes is it means there's no reason to take the worst gun or the more specialized gun. But if the crisis suits with flamethrowers are considerably cheaper than the melted gun crisis suits, well, all of a sudden it starts to change the like it starts to change the maths. And all of a sudden it's like, well, maybe maybe I can almost sneak in a third squad of crisis suits with the flamethrowers. There's a few there's a few units like that, like the Jukari Scourges. They can have any of the different heavy weapons available to the Dark Eldar, but you you take the Dark Lances, because you have to take the Dark Lances, because Dark Lances are really, really good. But I would love to play around with Deep Strike and Flamethrowers or Deep Strike and Melted Guns, but currently as it exists, I'm paying 110 points for the squad. Gotta take the Dark Lances or else I'm just losing money. I'm not getting the most efficiency I possibly can out of my units. But if they broke it up into different actual units and the Flamethrower one was considerably cheaper, well, that, that kind of changes everything. And speaking of changing everything, Games Workshop has teased some big reveals sort of coming to Adepticon. Obviously, I think we all know Age of Sigmar 4th Edition is coming, but there's also going to be stuff for Warhammer 40k. I have... I feel like I have no idea, but I feel like I'm going to absolutely nail it on what's going to happen. But for Age of Sigmar, it's definitely going to be Boner Boys versus the Sigmar Marines. I mean, they showed off a little Boner Boy cat skeleton thing. That's probably what it's going to be for Age of Sigmar. For 40k, the coolest thing they could do would be Emperor's Children Army Reveal. Slanesh never gets any attention in 40k because Slanesh is really, really hard to make work in the 40k universe. But oh, Emperor's Children would be so incredibly cool. Probably they'll just show off the next upcoming codexes. I can't remember what we're in store for. I think it's either Gene Steeler called or Sisters of Battle, but that would be rather lame. I do love the Sisters of Battle and I should love the Gene Steeler Cult because I have a Gene Steeler Cult army, but man. Oh, that army, that army is rough right now for me personally. It's just, I painted it, I painted it like in college and it's, it's a mess, but I would, oh, I would love to do a Sisters of Battle army. I've actually been making huge strides on my 40k armies because I have not been working on my Space Marines. It turns out if you just neglect Space Marines, you actually have a lot of free time to work on other things. And so I've made great progress on my Tyranids. I made huge progress on my Dark Eldar. Scott, I'm coming for you. And I don't know if you guys saw the video that came out on Monday. I've actually made some progress on my Death Guard. Stay tuned.
I am incredibly pumped for Adepticon. It's always a ton of fun and we will be there. So if you guys are going to be at Adepticon, make sure to search us out. You'll have to look for Nick because I'm really, really short and you're not going to see me over the crowd, but you might see Nick and then I'll probably be standing next to him so you can come say hi. I think what I'm most excited for with Adepticon, because there's nothing I really want to buy. Like there's no new thing or new game that I'm like, I'm definitely going to get that game. I think there's really two things I'm interested in. They're uh, from Black Knight Studios. There's a really interesting game called Don't Look Back, which is like a halfway between a board game and a tabletop war game based on like horror movies. So you got like your little cabin and your teenagers and your old jalopy. You've got Chucky. You've got Jason. Oh, what's, what's the Halloween guy? Mike Myers, or not Mike Myers, but Michael Myers. Very different movie character. You got all of these different classic horror movie villains that like chase down the teenagers and it looks like a lot of fun. Like that's that's one game that I do want to get. But the other thing I just want to keep my eyes open for is weird stuff, whether that's like old discontinued Warhammer or just weird one off miniatures. I do want to get just because it's a it's like a gigantic room full of every miniature you've ever seen. And I really want to find some really, really good, really weird stuff. And speaking of weird stuff. This uh, the other weekend, I was at Half Price Books, which is a secondhand bookstore, and they have kind of like a little nerd section. Usually it's just like Funko Pops and stuff in a one little cabinet, but they had a really interesting mini. They had this little guy in a blister for five bones. And oh, this brought me back. This brought me back to like 10 years ago when like resin resculpts and count as models were really, really popular. They're probably they're probably as big now as they were 10 years ago. They didn't really grow because I think 3D printing took a lot of that thunder. But just I remember like Cool Mini or not, all sorts of little companies, of course, famously uh, Spellcrow and Chapter House, which famously at Games Workshop sued because they were making all of the miniatures that Games Workshop didn't actually make. And they lost to Chapter House, although I think Chapter House eventually went under because of the lawsuit. But yeah, that was like when Games Workshop finally realized it's like, oh, other people can actually do what we do a little bit. So we have to we have to be a little bit smarter about this. And it was kind of during sixth edition Warhammer and moving into seventh edition Warhammer and seventh edition Warhammer was probably worst Warhammer. So, yeah, they really they really righted the ship quite a bit. But ah, this little miniature, this is a hand sculpted miniature from high tech miniatures, and it is definitely not a little inquisitor in Terminator armor. It's definitely not that. Is it a it is a completely fictitious custom character, but it's really, really nice. The fur is really, really good. The armor is really solid. He's got a little face behind this like cowling that looks really crispy. Like I'm going to paint this guy up and run him as a inquisitor in Terminator armor, which I already have an inquisitor in Terminator armor, but that's it's one of the oldest miniatures. It's a rogue trader Inquisitor and Terminator armor. It'll be really funny to have that old squishy model next to this really, really nice miniature. And it's just a huge blast from the past of back when tons and tons of company were make where companies were making count as miniatures for Warhammer 40K. And this is kind of what I'd be interested in looking for at Adepticon. Just the weird stuff, just stuff that like I don't really need but it'd be really cool to have in my army. And that sort of stuff is all over Adepticon. You kind of have to hunt for it, but when you find it, like it's it's a little bit magical. Like you're like, I got something in my goodie bag that's really special and like really coveted and has a lot of provenance of like, what is the story? And the story is somebody else thought this 40K thing was really, really cool. And so they took it and they made it as cool as they wanted it to be. And then they got to share it with me. And so now I have something as cool as David thought this thing could possibly be, which is even cooler than the Games Workshop team thought it could be. And so, yeah, you end up with really cool stuff like this, like this little tiny Inquisitor. That's what I'm really looking forward to with Adepticon. But one thing that I am incredibly nervous of with Adepticon is I actually promised a guy. Actually, it was Evan over from Miniac's channel. I promised him I'd have my Arena Rec stuff finished and I will. I still have plenty of time, but I'm running out of time very quickly. I finished this miniature. Well, it's almost done. I have to do the base, but I think I'm going to do all the bases at the exact same time. So they're very consistent. But this is Leo the Lion from Arena Rex. And it was a little tricky to paint, but one thing that's a little odd is 
it's just a lion. Like, there's no super cool techie thing or weirdness to it. It is just a lion figurine. And it, it looks like a lion. The sculpt is almost perfect, but like, I could go to the Wawatosa Zoo and get a lion that looks just this, this that looks this good. It's weird, it's just a lion. But it's, it's a really, really fun piece. You can either hire it into your crew or you can run it as like a dangerous terrain piece where you don't want to get too close to the lion. Or you can, because there's a push mechanic in the game, you can try to get other characters to move towards the lion, in which case they get eaten by the lion. But with Leo the Lion done, I need to paint like three more figures. And I could paint just three regular dudes, regular gladiators. But instead, I'm going to paint this monstrosity. This is Telesto. It is a sea monster or a sea spirit from Greek mythology, and it is glorious. There's also a rider that goes on there, so I guess I got to paint four more miniatures. But like compare this thing to Leo, you know, you've got a normal lion or you have a man horse fish, like a man horse beta fish. It is one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. It is probably the reason I pulled the trigger on Arena Rex. It is quite the miniature and it'll be done. It'll be done next week at Adepticon. I'm really excited to see what it looks like. I have no idea how I'm going to do it, but uh, I'm probably going to do it today. So we'll see. <laughs> but speaking of things I love to see, did you know we have a whole bunch of terrain available on our Patreon? Over there, we have a new set of terrain every month. This month, it's the modular Gothic buildings. These impressive structures are designed with competitive wargaming in mind. They are the perfect size, shape, and have functional windows for all your line of sight blocking needs. And it also comes with cybernetic cherubs for all of your decorating. And if you always want to be up to date on what's going on at Eon's Battle and be entered into our monthly giveaways, this month we're picking three followers to receive this month's terrain. You can follow the link in the description below to sign up to our newsletter. I am very excited for Adepticon and to see finally Emperor's Children be revealed for Warhammer 40k. I would give it maybe a 15% chance. Like, it's possible, but it's it's probably not going to happen. But I'm still looking forward to it. Thanks for watching.